presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport. In the show, the experience and heart of Felipe Reyes in our Game of the Week. The strength of EA7 Milan, Samardo Samuels. Fragisco Salvertis makes his home debut against his former master, Jelko Obradovic. Zoran Erseg is a unique and efficient centre. And we bring you the MVP of the round and the top three plays. You cannot stay 10 years in a club like Real Madrid if you're not a special player. Felipe Reyes is definitely that. When he made the short journey from Estudiantes in the summer of 2004, Felipe was one of the most brilliant prospects in Spain. Ten years later, at 34, he has won almost everything a player can possibly win. The only title he's still missing is the Turkish Airlines Euroleague. Felipe is sure that this year his team has what it takes to win. This year we are playing a fun style that has people hooked. We like to run the break and we are defending better than previous seasons. And that is making a difference. Watching Real Madrid on the court is a pleasure. Everybody enjoys it, perhaps even the opposition's supporters. The reason is that the players enjoy themselves, and not only during the games. They are mostly dynamic practices, with lots of five versus five, the kind that players like. They're not very long either, and that is also good. There are moments in practice where you can relax a little and get distracted. That cannot happen, you have to be well prepared. The practice sessions can be fun, but there is something more within the group. It's a group with great people. It's easy to get along with everyone. All players know about the goal of the team, and there are no players here that tried to go in a different direction from the rest of the group. Everybody in the team brings his own qualities, which creates the perfect chemistry. Among many other skills, Felipe brings a tangible addition, the rebounds. Without it, no team can win. It's clear that the position is very important, but so is the will to grab the ball. Sometimes you get more lucky and get more rebounds, and others you can't grab any. The important thing is to want the ball and get a good position. Real Madrid hosted Cesca Moscow on Thursday in the game of the week of round 11 of the top 16. And it was Felipe that scored the last basket of the first period to tie the score. At the end of a very close second quarter, Sonny Ween scored two of his 28 points for a 42-41 scoreline at half-time. After the break, the Blancos tried to move clear and took their advantage to 10 points with Tramel Darden, but the Russian champions reacted and closed the gap to 66-63 thanks to Weems. A three-pointer from the other top scorer, Rudy Fernandez, 28 for him too, gave another double-digit advantage to Madrid. Then Sergio Rodriguez increased it to 15 virtually ending the contest. It finished 93-79. Real Madrid are top of Group F with three games left to play.
for the second time this year after round three of the top 16 and the sixth in his outstanding EuroLeague career, Real Madrid star Rudy Fernandez earned the B-Win MVP award for round 11 of the top 16. The native of Palma de Mallorca, who will be 29 on April the 4th, scored 28 points, shooting 5 of 9 for 2-pointers, 4 of 7 on 3-pointers, and adding all 6 free throws he attempted. With 4 rebounds, 3 assists, 4 steals, and the 5 fouls he drew, Rudy reached a performance index rating of 33, the highest of any player on a winning team this week. EA7 Emporio Armani Milan big man Samardo Samuels was born in Trelawney, Jamaica, the same town as Usain Bolt, the fastest man on the planet. I lived 20 minutes away from me. You know, we grew up almost in the same neighborhood. You know, here's a guy. I was the best player in the country in basketball. Everybody's like, oh, Samuels. And then down the road is a guy who's like, he's, I mean, he's like a bullet. He's like, you know, he's so fast, you know. Samardo arrived in Europe last April and caught the eye for his powerful inside strength. He also has another characteristic that allows him to be particularly effective in his position. I got really big hands and so that helps for me. You know, I can catch the ball and make a good move every time I get it. I got to be aggressive. I like to play around the basket, you know, around the paint. Almost a year after his arrival, he has now become a perfect inside player, something which he particularly likes and which has definitely put an end to an old misunderstanding. Every time I come to a team, it's like, you're the five man. No, wait, I mean, well, you can be the four and the five. Playing center is an advantage for me because I, I feel like I'm, you know, more quicker than some of the bigs and I can do a little bit more, you know, at the center position. There is one move where he has improved greatly over the last few months. Catching it on the right block, you know, um, being able to catch it as low as possible, close to the basket where I can do different things. And now in Milan, it's like pick and roll, pick and roll. And I started like it. They changed my game a lot. I want to be a better defensive player. I want to be, you know, involved in every play. They make me be more energetic and be a complete basketball player. To play it, you need a perfect partner, and Samardo has found that person. Me and Curtis have, you know, put that bond together. You know, Daniel is a great player. You know, he can play also play the pick and roll. But when we practice every day, I shoot with Curtis. That's my shooting partner. He knows where to get me the ball, and he knows where I can get it to score and be effective. Samardo never attempts long-distance shots. It's not his job. But in Vittoria a few days ago, the right moment presented itself to break that habit. It was kind of like a joke me and Curtis had, because, you know, like every time I talk about it in practice, because I would work on this shot every day, and he's like, you get in the game and you don't shoot no three-pointers. It was kind of like the play was designed. It was the perfect opportunity to shoot a three-pointer. You know, we, was, we had a big lead. Uh, Everything was going correctly at that point, and I knew he was going to pass it, and I was just like ready to let it fly, like, you know, so it came off perfectly, released my feet, and everything was set properly, and I just let it fly, and surprisingly, it went in, and I was like, you know, so everybody calling me the shooter now. Olympia Milan is universally known as the team with the red shoes. Perhaps Amardo wants to remind everyone of this with his hair, or maybe not. One of my friends talked me into getting like, he should get a crazy hair, and I was like, okay. Because they always say I'm a simple guy, always quiet. You need to do something out of character, and I was like, okay, like, I would change my hair color. And one of his idols also wears a red shirt. I'm a big AC Milan fan. When I see Balotelli when I go out and I go crazy, like, oh my God, it's just Balotelli. And all my, play, um, all my teammates are like, I mean, you know, I mean, 
what's the big deal? You know what I mean? He's a big deal. Like, he's a big soccer superstar. In Jamaica, everybody on my friends like, did you see Bonatelli? You know, I'm like, yeah, I saw him, you know what I mean? And they wouldn't understand because, you know, we grew up on soccer. Samuels is having a great season, especially after the injury that kept him out of the very end of the regular season. This is probably down to the fact that Milan is less cold than where he was previously. I'm a big fan of Milan. It kind of reminds me of New York City a little bit. I'm still looking for the lake and the you know, place I can go fishing. Last year I was in Cleveland where it's like super cold and it makes me appreciate being in Milan now because there's no snow on the ground. I could ride my bike in this weather in Cleveland. I would be like, ah. One of the brightest stars of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague is shining once again high up in the sky over Athens. After playing for Panathinaikos his entire career and becoming the most crowned EuroLeague player in the Final Four era and winning five EuroLeague titles, Fragiskos Albertis retired in 2009. Now he is back as the new head coach of the team he once led on the court. If you think that I came in Panathinaikos when I was 16 and now I'm almost 40, that means that I'm more than half uh my life I spent uh, in this club. I live uh, many great things and as uh, a player and as a team manager also I used to be and I hope it's going to be continue as a coach. The bond that ties Panathinaikos and Albertis is unique and one of the longest in the history of basketball. He arrived in 1990 from Glifada FC in exchange for the Greens best water polo player. And he ended his playing days in 2009 after winning the Euroleague in Berlin against Seska Moscow. The journey started when I sang first time for Manathnaikos. And uh, I had uh, the luck to live one great moment in my last game. It's something that I uh, will never forget. There is only one objective at the club. This is a huge responsibility and it is a motivating factor for the players. If somebody knows what pressure and uh, pleasure means in, in this team, uh, I believe it's me. Panathinaikos uh, must win in every game. He cannot lose in the mind of people and in our mind. Along with the pressure, there is also the unconditional love towards the team of millions of fans. Once you step inside the Oaka, you realise what a magical arena it is. A privilege for those players that can call it home. No many players in, the, uh, in Europe has uh, the opportunity to play in 20,000 people. It's uh, great. It's the best feeling for every athlete in to play such a warm uh, atmosphere. But uh, in the other part, we have to concentrate exactly on the court, what we have to do, and do it uh, as... Uh, better we can. Fragiskos' home debut really was a special occasion, and on the eve of the game, he prepared the minds and bodies of his players. It is a new situation for everybody, but having been a player for so many years helps. I can understand how the players uh, feel in some moments and what they expect from the coach uh, to hear, not only tactically, and I mean, in some uh, psychologically support, let's say. For Fragiskos Albertis' home debut, he welcomed the most feared and loved of opponents, Jelko Obradovic, the coach of Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul, who guided the Greens for 13 years and is adored by the fans at the Oaka. I feel that is my home. 13 years, probably the best years of my life, and you know, my heart is over here, will be always. And of course, it will be very, very emotional for me. Even for the most successful coach in EuroLeague history, taking on his former captain was a special and unexpected moment indeed. Very smart person, player, that he understands the game. It was a privilege for me to, to work with him. To be honest, uh, I never see Wish in 
Albert is to, to be coach. This is the surprise for me, but we have talent. He understands the, the game. Now, everything depends if he's really ready to, to continue to do this job. And if he's ready, I wish to him everything to do like in his career, like, like, like player. Winning such a crucial and emotional game of the season, you need clear and simple ideas, but in no way easy or predictable. We must run more and uh, try to get a higher score. Give 100% to have passion and uh, desire, to play free, to play hard, after the game to be satisfied that we gave everything uh, we, we had. But uh, to talk is easy, you know, the point is uh, to do it on the court. Beating former mentor Obradovic in his first game at the Oaka was a huge mountain to climb, and the enormity of the task dawned on Fragiskos when the Serbian coach came onto the court. This is still his home. Here, he is still the king. So Bradovic is a person that we spent together 30 years. It's a good friend, let's say, people that I respect, I like, and uh, he will be always uh, inside me. I wish uh, to have his passion and his uh, wish for uh, every game to be winner. Nemanja Bjelica and Emir Prelzic put Fenerbahce in front at the beginning of the game. Then Zach Wright stepped up as the Greens took the lead. At half-time, the stage belonged to coach Željko Obradovic once again. In the second half, Panathinaikos increased their lead with Antonis Fotsis and with Michael Bramos, top scorer of the night with his career-high 23 points and a fabulous 7 of 8 from the distance. The hosts, led by an outstanding Dimitris Diamantidis, kept control in the game. Panathinaikos Athens registered a pivotal win by downing Fenerbahce Ulker Istanbul 76-67 and improving to a 6-5 record, gaining the tiebreak advantage over Fenerbahce. Frankie knows basketball. He knows what Panathinaikos is. You know, he knows like the titles that we have to chase, you know, year by year. It doesn't matter, you know, what players or what team that we have. The success here that, that we laid down in the past is the future. He's doing well, you know what I mean? And we're all supportive of him. I'm, I'm very supportive of him. It's strange, you know, not have to call him, you know, coach. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, other than that, he's, he's, he's stepped in in a very, very difficult situation. And so far, he's, he's uh, handling, handling it uh, quite well. Zoran Erseg, center of Galatasaray Liv Hospital Istanbul, was born in Pakrat, Serbia, 29 years ago. And what makes him stand out from the others is the way he interprets his role. The best of my power is shoot from outside, so and I think that's the, 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 the best what I had. But also I am trying, you know, to, to improve my game, to play under the basket and uh, with more penetrations. Improving in the paint is next on his agenda. 
even though he is an effective shooter, Zaram played his best game of the season when he scored 24 points with an excellent 5 for 6 by two pointers. Against Real Madrid, you cannot you know, tell what happened exactly. It's just the game was at my day, I think. Zaran has played four Turkish airline Euroleague seasons with three different teams, Olympiakos Piraeus and Seska Moscow before Galatasaray. He should be satisfied about his fourth season so far, although the main thing is to perform as a team. All games up and down. Some, some of them was good, some, some of them not, but uh, the, the most important thing is, I think, the, 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 the team is playing good, not the, the, the personal, personal, you know, the, the players. So I hope that everybody needs to, to give 100% and it doesn't matter who will be, you know, the, the, the best scorer in the team just to improve our game and to play good basketball. Zaran has met up with Ergin Ataman again in Istanbul, a coach he has known for a long time, which made his return to the Turkish capital a lot easier. Three years I was in Istanbul playing for Besiktas with the same coach. Most of the guys was there. So for me, the, the adaptation in the new club it was not that hard and I know the system and it was easily for me. We was working together in Besiktas when we took the trick up. So since then, uh, we have good, good relation. It is a very delicate moment of the season for Galatasaray. With three games to go, the playoffs are within reach. That's hard. It's a lot of good teams in the group. But I hope that uh, we will be a you know, better team and we will fight for the top eight. And now the top three plays of the week. Number three, Madrid, Spain. Here's a combination we've seen before for Real Madrid. Rodriguez to Fernandez. The alley up executed to perfection by these specialists. Real Madrid's offense firing on all cylinders. Number two, Athens, Greece. An emotional night as legendary coach Zelko Abradovic returned to face his former team. But Stefan Lazme with the big block for Panathinaikos at a big moment in the game to deny Bojan Bogdanovic. And the number one play of the week, Istanbul, Turkey. Carlos Arroyo set a new team record with 11 assists. And this was the best of them all. Finished off in impeccable style by Pops Mensa Bonsu. Spectacular alley-oop, reverse dunk. Play of the week from Galatasaray. The Martin Carpena Arena is getting ready to host one of the crunch games of the week as two teams desperately look to keep their playoff hopes alive. Unicaja Malaga host reigning champions Olympiacos Piraeus in our game of the week. Since the turn of the century, this game has taken place a total of 13 times, with the Reds winning nine, three in previous top 16 encounters. Group E is extremely tight, and this head-to-head -head between playoff contenders could be a decisive turning point. In the first game between the two at the Peace and Friendship Stadium in Piraeus, Olympiakos routed Unicaja 73-55. In that game, the winners set a new club record with 21 offensive rebounds and had 16 points from Georgios Printesis and 12 from Brian Dunstan. While Unicaja had just a player in double figures of scoring, Nick Canna Medley, who bagged 11 points. It will be a tense game where every possession could make the difference. The home team are trying to reach the playoffs for the first time since the 2006 7 campaign, whilst the visitors are still in line to claim a historic third title in a row. Fireworks are expected next Thursday between Unicaja Malaga and Olympiacos Piraeus in a pivotal game of the week.
presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport.